drive you wet. Cronenberg does BL Hamlet. <laughs> Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee first. If Sally Rooney did YA for Film Bros. <laughs> oh, <laughs> where are my manners? If you enjoy experimental novels about 9-11 bombers, this is for you. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your boy Nate, here to do a May reading wrap-up. I'm Nathan, by the way. If any of you have forgotten or if you're new here, I read books because reading is sexy, and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. Let me, let me just say, it is 7 in the morning, and this is probably the earliest I've ever filmed a video. But we got some time. I got some, some time to cover some books, so let's talk books. I read a total of nine books for May. Not bad, not bad at all. And as always, we'll be giving these flash review of books from present tense me as you are enjoying past tense of the logs. Okay, okay, let's get into it, shall we? So first start off with technically not a book, but the Paris Review, edition two, four, three. Cute, we got some interviews. Pictures, poems. I want to see the pictures. I, I love me some pictures in a book. So this is just great. Will say I enjoyed the interviews in this little collection more than anything else. But there's a great interview with Mary Gateskill, Rita Dove, and Olga Tkarchuk, who did drive your drive your what? Drive your plow over the bones of the dead. Flights, Book of Jacobs, uh, she a kooky one. There's a great excerpt where she talks about how she was writing the Book of Jacobs while writing something else uh, across the span of four laptops, multiple open notebooks, and excerpts that <laughs> belong and exist in this one book and another, and repetition so if you're ever wondering why olga's you know repeating information it's because she's a messy bitch she a messy bitch like girl she like names the files with the same name like give them different names like get organized girl and she plays solitaire and yeah uh good good coffee table book like this this it's so pretty not to have so yeah beautiful spring read. Okay, after that, I read, oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> so before I finish the Paris review, I actually read The Death I Gave Him by M. X. Liu, and it's a, what I described as Cronenberg does B.L. Hamlet. And this was a lot of fun, this was a lot of fun. I told myself I'd try to read more sci-fi books, maybe fantasy who knows but this was this was a lot of fun as a debut book it's not not bad not bad i think it sort of dragged a bit in predictability near the end but sci-fi bl hamlet like <laughs> so probably also one of the most interesting sex scenes i've read in a really long time yeah, it was like non-physical, but incredibly internal. And I'll leave it there. You're just gonna have to pick it up. But this one is out by Rebellion Publishing, September 12th of this year. Pick it up, pick it up. It's a, it's a cute steamy one. Yeah, for a sci-fi book. I'm glad, I'm glad this is my foray into sci-fi. Yes. Okay, next up I read Cherry Wagon by Joseph Maddock about a Lone Star man who loves this girl named Red and a epistolary collection of letters, poems, and just his like love for this girl as a color for a name. Set in Los Angeles and I believe in New York as well. To be honest, I, I don't even recall what this is even about. It's a bit too sentimental, but in its short form factor, it's experimental in form. It's sort of written in these prose pieces and images in the back that sort of cast out the characters in the book. 
but interesting, just very, very interesting. If uh, you're having a hard time writing a love letter, I definitely recommend you pick this up and steal some of the lines. So yeah, Cherry Wagon, just Matic. After that, on the Kindle, I had This Is How You Lose the Time War. Did this as a buddy read with my home gal, Hajin. Hajin, if you're watching this, I love you. Because this blew up on Twitter. This is by two people, Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. It's an epistolary novel that traverses space and time and love letters just exchanged between red and blue. I don't know what it was, but red showing up in this and in this book, but also a sci-fi book, but very prose heavy, very incredibly fluid, uh, not much plot, a lot of yearning. And I think that's why the book fell apart for me because it was just, yeah, this would have worked for me if I was younger and didn't know what love was. But uh, this, this was, it was all right. It was all right. Yeah, just because the pl there wasn't enough plot to sort of move the story along, given that there are so many time jumps and moments where you're not quite sure where the characters are, what time period they're in, what you know, catastrophic event that just occurred, and them sort of chasing each other through these letters across time and space. It's uh, like good in theory, poor in execution. It, it seems like I'm reading a lot of um, experimental sci-fi, which is, I don't know, kind of kind of sexy if you ask me. This is how you lose the time war. It was, uh, it was aight. It was aight. Okay, up next I read how to Write an Autobiographical Novel by Alexander Chi. <sighs> every single writer or every single person who wants to be a writer needs to read this. This is like your, this is the Bible. This is the text. I cried, I cried. It made me rethink if I need to go to grad school for writing, if I need to, you know, just leave the nine to five and come to the campus and work on my silly little novels. But through personal essays and recollections of Chi's own past, he connects them to the art and joy of writing, the necessity of it. And just so tenderly done, it's going into my top 10 of the year. Uh, just a very, very important book. And like any any writers out there, if y'all like to write, this this is this is phenomenal. Like skip grad school or maybe not, maybe do it, but definitely pick this up if you're thinking about doing an MFA or anything for writing. So yes. Okay, next up I read Close to Home by Michael McGee. This was on the Kindle, technically an ARC but it's it's already out. It's published May 16th, Farron Strauss. I said, if Sally Rooney did YA for Film Bros, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> but follows the life and times of Belfast teens, sort of nothing to do kids trying to, trying to make it by, trying to get out of trouble, um, but always end up in trouble. And this is fine, very much sort of mood reading and just didn't work for me ultimately because it was very debut-y in that uh, there was like a passage about Clarice Lispector, like our character Sean, who sits at a cafe with the Clarice Lispector book and he tries to get this girl to notice him at the cafe with the book. But like, of course, nothing happens, but also uh, the scene just ends there. <laughs> like Sean doesn't go into detail about like what reading the specter at Sean's age means. And that just, I don't know, that just saddened me a bit. Like, I don't know, I don't know. If you enjoyed Skins, you might enjoy this. Like season one of Skins, sort of. It's just, uh, yeah, feels very amateurish because it's a debut novel, but McGee writes with sort of this honesty, which I'm, 
excited to see written through more in his voice in future novels. So yeah, promising writer. Just uh, this one felt very debut-y. Okay, next up I read Chelsea Girls, Eileen Miles. Did this as a body read with Bibliosophie and Ben. Yes, still gathering our thoughts about this. Honestly, did, did not quite work for me and not quite sure why it got so much hype when it first came out or when like I first saw it on everybody's Instagram. A collection of Miles' life through sex, drugs, booze, and as much as I love all of those things and, you know, reach for novels about those things, this one just didn't work. There was almost this... Okay, the stories have this raw intensity to them that lacked emotional distance required for readers to settle within the very feeling that Miles was writing from, but these felt almost too angry, as if they were more focused on capturing all of the details in their usual staccato voice, but there needed to be this sort of, um, I believe uh, Bibliosophie described it as like a gauze. There needed to be this beautiful veil needed to create empathy in order to connect to the stories more, but we, we didn't get that veil. And I think that veil exists a, mo a lot much better in Miles's uh, poetry than uh, something like this. So uh, yeah, a bit disappointed by this. I think though the titular story, which is at the end, very much captures the very essence of this book. So if you're wary of picking this up, I definitely recommend finding it in the bookstore and just reading the titular story and then figure out what you want to do from there. But yes, Chelsea Girls, Eileen Miles, but also this cover is so sexy. Look at them, they're incredible. Okay, next up I did a buddy read with Kieran from Kieran Reader. We did Ada by Jarrett Quebec. Um, this is about a 9-11 bomber. It was, it was wild, pretty bonkers. Buildings speak to the man, tracks the very history in autobiographical fiction of one of the main 9-11 bombers. And yeah, very experimental in form. Quebec is very smart, but the issue with experimental fiction is sometimes it's a bit cold. So I felt a bit cold while reading this, but I still think it's a very strong and important book about 9-11 that was pretty ballsy of Quebec to have put out but definitely still worth your time. And I hope more people talk about this because there's not a lot of people who have uh, read about this on the booktube. So yes, wow, doing a very poor job of talking about this. But I'm a fan of experimental novels, so it sort of worked for me. If you enjoy experimental novels about 9-11 bombers, this is for you. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a kooky one. But well done, very well done. I think perhaps Quebec's strongest novel of the only two I've read, this and BTW, yes. Okay, next I had an ARC of Innards by Makhokodi Machene. She's a South African writer. This is out by WW Norton and Company and it's already released um, out June 6th but it is a love letter to her hometown Soweto in South Africa, and it's just beautifully rendered. It's a collection of short stories that revolve around the people of Soweto. We get sex, love, death, family, neighbors, mythology, all of these things beautifully captured within uh, Machene's very interesting prose, like a very particular voice I've never heard before. Exquisite, very very good. Um, also very much a mood read. And yeah, I don't think I've read any South African voices. So if anybody has any recs for South African literature, let me know. I'm very curious. 
trying to read narratives from different places. Ultimately, a very beautiful and earnest love letter to Machene's hometown. G gorgeously done. Gorgeous, gorgeous writing. Out by W.W. Norton and Company. Already out. Pick it up. Innards. Okay, and that, that wraps it up. That's, that's May. Just wanted to do a quickie. I apologize if uh, this video was meh. <laughs> yeah, I, I just came back from like four days of absolute wildness. You'll see in the vlogs coming up. At least I got my coffee. Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee first. Okay, well, be well, do good work. Oh, <laughs> where are my manners? Let me know what you read in May. What should I be putting on my radar? I already have a summer reading list out, but like, let me sneak in any recs that anybody has. Let me know what I should be reading. And as always, be well, do good work, keep in touch.